Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, walking robot simulation. So imagine that we have like a two dimensional grid, let's call it an XY plane. So we start at the origin here. So this is zero, zero, obviously, and we're actually facing the direction north. So we have both a position and a direction to keep track of. So theoretically, you could do this with three variables, obviously the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and then another one, which I'm gonna just say D for short, the direction. And the direction's a bit interesting. X and Y, they can be any positive, well, I guess any real integer. I guess it's an integer in the context of this problem, so I'm technically correct. There's not gonna be uh, fractions or decimals. We might as well get into like the, what the problem is asking. We're gonna be moving. Like we're, There's gonna be a, a simulation component to this problem. And we're always gonna be moving by whole units. We're always gonna be moving either one, two, three, all the way up until nine units. Uh, the direction though can only be one of four possibilities. It can be north, east, south, and west. So we could technically keep track of that with an enumerated type, but like I said, the fact that there's gonna be a simulation, I've solved a few problems like these before, and the fact that I happen to know a trick called having an array for directions. We could use enum types. We could have like north, east, south, west, but when it comes to coding interviews, these types of things can be more concisely solved with an array. Let me show you what I mean. This direction, it could technically be considered a pair of values, which is zero and positive one. Why did I do that? Well, this direction could be represented as moving in the x direction. Okay, I just uh, realized, I'm, I'm really sorry, I just realized I put this in the wrong spot. I'm thinking of matrices, I guess, but this should be y and this one should be x. Again, sorry about that. So this is zero because we're moving in the x direction none. Like you can see, we started here and now we're here. We didn't move in the x direction, but we moved in the y direction by one. Like uh, since we're pointing in this direction, y is plus here. So if we wanted to go in the other direction, let's say we wanted to go here, what would you call this? Well, this could be represented as zero because the X again is not changing, but Y is changing. It's going in the other direction. It's not going here, it's going down. So we put a negative one for that. And so we could do the same thing with the other two directions. This direction could be positive one for the X and then zero for the Y, it's not changing. And then this direction is gonna be negative one, zero. So now that we have that stuff, let me finally explain what the problem is asking for us. It's basically saying that we're gonna be given some instructions. So there's three possible instructions. One, we turn left 90 degrees. So in other words, counterclockwise. The other is we move right by 90 degrees, that is clockwise. And the other is we move some distance. Again, one through nine units. We just want to know among that, we want to know what is the maximum distance that we were from the origin, from the starting position, and we're gonna square that. So just a very quick example, let's say we have something like this. Uh, let's say this is three, this is four. The value that they're telling us to return is not necessarily this value here. This is five. Uh, we can calculate that by three squared plus four squared and then square root that. Um, but they want us to give this value without taking the square root, or in other words, take this value and square it. So we want 25, or in other words, take this formula and don't apply the square root. Everything before the square root, everything inside of it, that's the value that we wanna return. Now you might be thinking, well, the farthest away that we can get from the origin, isn't it just gonna be after we've gone through all of the instructions? So to actually look at an example here, this is kind of what the input is gonna look like. So these are gonna be the commands, the instructions I was talking about. So this positive four means that we're gonna move four in the north direction. That's the direction we started in. Then negative one. So that's not a distance, that is a direction change. I believe it is clockwise. So then we would uh, turn to the right. So we're still here, we're still at position four um, and the y is zero, but now we're facing that direction. And then lastly, we move three units. So we would end up somewhere over here. Let's call that, I'm messing up my uh, coordinates again, I'm really sorry, three, four. Just like how we're moving further away from the origin, it's possible that we could move closer to the origin. We might move down, we might move down again, we might move to the left then. At every single point here, we could calculate the distance from the origin and then constantly update that. So that's 
just the general idea of how the simulation is going to work. There's one last thing that we haven't talked about, and that's this kind of notion of obstacles. So we're given an array of coordinates, which each of those is going to represent like an obstacle. And what that means is, for example, let's actually go through this second one here. It does a pretty good job of explaining what they actually mean. So we start here. I'll just kind of do this instruction by instruction. We're going to move four in the north direction. That's where we initially started. So let's just put a second point over here and let's call it zero four. Um, and then negative one. Okay, so then we change directions to the right, then four. And remember that there is an obstacle here. Um, the scaling isn't appropriate, I think, but there's an obstacle here at two, four. So right now we want to go here. We want to go all the way to four. Four, but we can't we get stuck at the obstacle like it prevents us from going any further we only get halfway but the confusing part at least for me is that we do not stop at the obstacle we stop one spot before the obstacle so that's kind of what i meant at the beginning when i said we're only going to be dealing with integers or whole numbers we're not going to be having to do any fractions or decimals or anything like that that's actually part of the reason that they tell us to square the distance the final distance before actually returning it they don't want us to deal with decimals so here we stop one before we get there so we would stop here at one four and then we continue to proceed through the rest of the instructions. Now you might wonder, well, if we got stuck there, what are the rest of the instructions going to do for us? Well, hopefully we would change directions at some point, either go down or go up or go back to the left, just not going in this direction. Or maybe, uh, you know, we go around that direction. Uh, but anyway, so this line is not really drawn on the same uh, you know, level as this. So I apologize for that. Just kind of believe me when I say there's a point here that represents one four. And then we actually change directions. We go negative two. So I think that's a counterclockwise. So I believe we will be going up and we'll be going up uh, four units. So I think we will end somewhere here. It looks like one eight. And then, you know, from each of these points, we could have calculated the final distance from the origin. And then among all of those, we maximize them. So that's like the general idea of how we're going to solve this problem. There's just one little point that I haven't really mentioned. And honestly, I could mention it right now. I'm sure it would make sense to you, but I want to give you a chance to figure it out by yourself when I'm just coding up the code. I'm going to sort of do it in a naive way, but the fix is pretty simple. It's only like two or three lines of code. So I think it's something you might find interesting in terms of, uh, overall time and space. There's nothing crazy. We're only going to be having a few variables. We're going to be going through the command. So I believe the overall time complexity is going to be big O of let's say N uh, plus M, where I believe M is going to be the obstacles because I think these could be of different sizes. In terms of space complexity, it's actually going to be big O of M. I guess that's kind of a giveaway of what the solution is going to involve, but we're going to have a data structure for the obstacles. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of boilerplate. We have our X and Y coordinates. We have our directions. These are the possible directions that are available to us. And I want you to notice that I put them in a very particular order. So the first one represents going north. So that's north. Next is east, next is south, next is west. Why do you think I did it this way? Because uh, if we want to turn right, then we're turning uh, clockwise, right? We're going to be going from north to east or from east to south or from south to west. If we're going left, if we're turning counterclockwise, we're going to be going from west to south, from south to east from east to north. So I have these in that order intentionally. Next, I'm going to keep track of like what uh, direction we're in. And I'm going to do that with an index. Actually, I'm going to have D, which is going to be the index. Maybe I could have made it I. I don't think it matters too much. But initially, it's zero because we're facing north. We're going to have one more variable for the result. That's what we're going to ultimately be returning, the max distance that we can get. And then I'm going to start coding this up. I'm going to go through every command in our input commands. If the command is negative one, that means we turn left. Else if the command is negative two, actually I think this one was when we turn right and this is when we turn left, but in any case, this one will just be as simple as taking D and incrementing it by one. This one will be taking D and decrementing it by one. Obviously, the issue that we run into is what if we go out of bounds? What if we go from here and increment it? Or we go from here and decrement it? Well, we don't want to have to deal with that. The easiest thing to do is actually just take this and mod it by the length of this array, which is always going to be four. So take this mod by four, same thing. 
down here. So those are the pretty easy cases. There is a third case here where we're going to have a positive value from one through nine. So if we weren't dealing with obstacles, if we were just doing a very basic simulation, this is how I would do it. I would get a DX DY. This is the difference or, or the direction, I guess, the direction of X and direction of Y. Um, we'll get that like this. So D tells us the index, the direction that we're facing, and we can just get the pair like this. So this tells us how much we need to modify X and Y by. It tells us which direction we're going in, right? One of these is going to be zero. We just don't know which one, but this is a pretty elegant way to code this up. What I'm about to show you, we could have done it with like four different if statements or whatever, but I think this is a, a better approach. Now, what we would do is update our X and Y. We would set X equal uh, to X plus uh, DX, and then Y is Y plus DY. But that only tells us the direction that we're moving in. That doesn't tell us the magnitude. So to each of these, to DY and DX, we're going to multiply it by a C. C tells us the actual magnitude. It's the command. It's not a very descriptive variable, so you might have forgotten it, but if it's negative one it, or negative two, it tells us to change the direction. Otherwise, it's a positive number and it tells us the magnitude that we're going in that direction. So we'll do the same thing here, C multiplied by that. So this is how we would solve the problem if it wasn't for the obstacles. And lastly, I think outside of all of these, let's maximize our result. So something like this result is max of itself as well as the square of each of X and Y for reasons we talked about earlier, X squared plus y squared. We don't need to take the square root of this. Now, you tell me, how do we deal with the whole obstacles? And remember the fact that if we get hit by an obstacle, we will stop one unit before that. I'll give you another hint. It has to do with the fact that we don't necessarily need to multiply these by that. We don't need to update both of the coordinates by the entire distance. We can actually update the coordinate one unit at a time. So what I mean is we can do something like this. We can say, give me the DX DY and then go through the loop, loop this many times, C times. And every time you loop, update the X and Y coordinate. And now there's no need to have the variable C here for obvious reasons. Um, and I'm going to get rid of it there and I'm going to get rid of it down here. This is technically the exact same code. It's just slightly less efficient, but we know that this variable C, it's going to be one through nine. So this is never going to be super inefficient, but now we have the exact same solution. I haven't really changed this. Now I'm going to change it. We will avoid the obstacles this way. We will throw them into a hash set in Python. It's pretty easy to do this. Uh, just convert this guy into a hash set like this um, using something called set comprehension. I cover this pretty well in my Python for coding interviews course, if you are curious, but we will do for O in uh, obstacles. We can't use lists in a hash set, so we will actually convert this to a tuple before we do that. Believe it or not, I also cover that in my Python for coding interviews course. Um, but now that we have that in the hash set down here, we want to update the coordinate, but we never want the coordinate to land on an obstacle. So what do we do? Well, very simple. Just take this. I'm just going to copy and paste it because I'm lazy rather than use a variable. Just take this. And if it's in the obstacles hash set, then break out of this loop, this loop that is updating the coordinate. And the reason for that is because we know that this direction is going to stay the same. We're going to loop however many times in that direction. But if we hit an obstacle, there's no need to keep looping. We're not going to be able to go in that direction anymore. Hopefully on the next iteration of the loop, we will change direction so that we can continue to proceed. But in any case, as you can see on the left, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.